So next up in our module, we will discuss uh, in depth so-called design patterns. So similar to the architectural patterns, design patterns are essentially good solutions to how to design your system, in this case on a class and relationship level, on an implementation level. Now originally uh, the term patterns comes from a guy called Christopher Alexander and he published in 1977 a book uh, which is called A Pattern Language and that's an architecture book. So this was originally the idea for architecture that a pattern is some kind of timeless uh, some kind of timeless entity called a pattern. Uh, so Alexander had this idea and there are over 200 in his book that there exist these descriptions of a part of a town of a city uh, that are sort of proven solutions that work well for wh whatever way you want to look at it uh, and that can be reused in different contexts. And just to give you an example, it would be for example, uh, I have that on the slides, there is an example of where you should place a cafe. So if you have a cafe you should build a place it next to a busy street and kind of offer different corners so that people can kind of uh, just hide in the corners and let the life go past and I don't know do people watching and so on but it's on this kind of level so it's kind of descriptions on how do you design a courtyard or a street a house uh, and this is timeless it doesn't depend on the location you have these kind of cafes in very warm countries and very cold countries uh, in very different cultures it's somehow timeless and uh, in a way placeless. So the software community has taken up this quite a lot so the pattern term came, became quite popular and they've decided well for architecture we have architectural patterns, proven solution, design patterns for classes and relationships. There are things, uh, we won't cover them much here but there's something that's called an anti-pattern so things, solutions that are proven to not work very well. Uh, I gave an example there already for example the God class I mentioned in the previous video is an anti-pattern for design. So this is very influential um, and among all of these, uh, among the design patterns there are the so-called gang of four patterns which are probably the most uh, well-known ones. Uh, this was a group of four authors that published a book about design patterns in object-oriented systems, so it's purely object-oriented uh, and it's a list of 23 patterns that became extremely influential. Um, it's important to say that while they are not quite timeless, there has been a lot of debate around how useful they are uh, and that's something that is, that is normal, software evolves and uh, for example the execution might change, the, the way of compiling and running software changes, so not all of these patterns uh, will endure over time. But we will in the following videos, in the remainder of this module actually, uh, look at some of these patterns and just to give you an introduction of how they are mainly structured, they are structured into three groups and that is uh, creational patterns, structural patterns and behavioral patterns. So essentially solutions for the creation of classes and objects and so on. Uh, creation or structuring your system, what kind of blocks should you have and how to uh, design it that the behavior is good or well working. Uh, and we will go into a couple of each of these uh, patterns in more depth and as I said you will probably recognize them, some of them at least, you might have seen them, you might have always wondered why exactly uh, they look like they do, uh, we'll discuss it in depth.